Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We've got the last three of the big Kentucky Derby preps, and I think I've got my top two ranked Kentucky Derby contenders running this weekend. Well, good for you, Matt. I, I imagine they'll be your top picks. We got a lot to do today. Last week, of course, we saw fierceness air in the Florida Derby, Matt. That was impressive. Uh, but I thought Muth, uh, Muth in the Arkansas Derby, probably not going to be in the Kentucky Derby. I say probably because now there's a lawsuit out there. Uh, Forever Young uh, looked good, staying undefeated over in Dubai. So, uh the Kentucky Derby starting to shape up, and this weekend will help shape it up even more, Matt Shipman. We're going to start in Lexington, Kentucky. One million dollar grade one bluegrass stakes Saturday at Keeneland. A field of 11, Matt, uh, with uh, big races to look at. I, I think we're going to uh, look at our top contenders here. So we'll start on the outside, number 10. Tyler Gaffleon will hop aboard Sierra Leone, Matt. Uh, since he was a $2.3 million yearling purchase, uh, Sierra Leone has done little to disappoint, made a big move, if you remember, in that Remsen and came from way back in last, swung to the lead, but then Dornock came back at him on the rail, Matt, and actually beat him by a nose. Sierra Leone... Look good, though, last time winning the nine furlong Risen Star at Fairgrounds. Yeah, so with everything else that's going on in these uh, three derby preps with 32 ho hope derby hopefuls entered across the country, we've got a little rematch here between uh, uh, Sierra Leone and Darnock, and that will make that makes things exciting. It looks like uh, it looks like uh, uh, Sierra Leone probably will be the favorite for Chad Brown as Chad Brown uh, still uh, searching for that first uh, derby victory. Uh, Sierra Leone, we certainly love his performance in the Risen Star. Yeah, he flew late. Uh, maybe, maybe the maybe the uh, the big run was timed a little bit better than the Remsen. Uh, actually, one of the door knock uh, owners contacted me, Matt, and he said he's looking for a rivalry. The sport needs a rivalry. So maybe we'll have it in those two Remsen runners, door knock Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is the one that can really pass horses of the two. In fact, he likes to be pretty far off the pace. Uh, big field. Uh, there is some speed in here. It looks like Sierra Leone should have an honest pace to run at at Keeneland. Sometimes Keeneland does give the advantage to horses uh, closer to the lead, though. I do like the fact that Sierra Leone already has two races at nine furlongs. Certainly looks like a deserving favorite in here. But then you got his rival, Doorknock, the horse that re-rallied on the rail, Matt Dornock, uh, of course, a full brother to the Kentucky Derby winner from 2023, Mage. Dornock has won three in a row, and he's looked pretty good doing it. He sure has three in a row, Brian, going back to the fall meeting at Keeneland. So this is a horse that has a win over the track when he broke his maiden uh uh, in in Lexington, and then that win that you described really well over Sierra Leone uh, in the Remsen, and most recently a win in the Fountain of Youth in a field that, for a variety of of reasons, uh, uh, got uh, uh, scratched down to you know a relatively small field that wasn't the toughest test. So this is a bigger test, a tougher test for uh, Dornock in here. Yeah, I think Sierra Leone, and that's why he's the favorite. Sierra Leone certainly uh, impressed a little bit more in his one race, winning the Risen Star, where Doorknock really did not beat much and and kind of uh, stalled a little bit, if you will. He he didn't put those horses away that came back and didn't do much in the Florida Derby uh, subsequently. So uh, Doorknock will have to step forward, but I certainly think he's eligible. Son of Good Magic uh, has done little wrong. He won his maiden as you mentioned at Keeneland by six and a half lengths. So uh, certainly has a nice race over the track and uh, certainly the, uh, 
the most likely horse to uh, to beat Sierra Leone. Now, maybe we'll have a rivalry. We'll see. There's a lot more to talk about in the bluegrass. Let's take a look, though, at the uh, uh, Timeform U.S. Pace Projector right now. We're going to see a pretty consistent theme with the Timeform U.S. Pace Projectors this week, Matt, because that fast pace button is lit up on all three of them. Here you see 11 horses with the 10 Sierra Leone pretty far back. Meanwhile, Doorknock, uh, the four, is one of the horses out on the lead. But there's several horses that could be uh, prompting a pretty solid pace here. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, when you get quality horses together in a relatively big field, you can expect a pace that's going to be on the fast side. Agreed. And, and you see another horse up there, uh, Top Connor. Uh, the one uh, lightly raced Chad Brown horse, a very lightly raced Chad Brown horse. But the other horse up there with Doorknock on the projected early lead, Matt, is number six, Just a Touch. And I think we need to talk about Just a Touch more. Uh, never before, never before, Matt, have I seen so many interesting lightly raced horses in these late Kentucky Derby preps. We're going to see it in the Bluegrass. We're certainly going to see it in the Wood Memorial Uh just a touch is one of them. All he's had is a sprint uh, at fairgrounds where he won impressively for trainer Brad Cox, six furlongs at fairgrounds. And then he went to New York for the Gotham and uh, he was running well at the end, but uh, is second best to deterministic that day. Right. Uh, uh, another of the Brad Cox uh, Kentucky Derby contenders and, and as a horse with only a maiden win, that was a really nice performance in the Gotham Stakes. Remembering that uh, that track on that day was really muddy, and it was a sealed track. Uh, we are expecting a fast track. It has finally stopped raining here in the New York area with like five straight days of rain. So by Saturday, we should have a fast track for uh, 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 the Wood Memorial um, that we'll talk about later on. I, I I got sidetracked there a little bit, so excuse me for that. Um, Just a Touch was the favorite, a significant favorite, in both of his starts, including that Gotham Stakes. Yeah, Just a Touch, well-liked. Brad Cox, of course, has won a lot in recent years. Uh, the Son of Justify looks like he could be a very good horse. I wouldn't hold that two-length loss in the Gotham against him too much. He moved forward from that maiden sprint. Again, he was finishing well. Second best to deterministic. A lot of people, you I know, love deterministic. So just a touch, certainly a horse to consider here. The odds seem a little bit low on a horse who's only had two races against a little bit more proven commodities in Sierra Leone and Doorknock. Uh, other horses to talk about here, it, my long shot in the field, Matt, would be found on the far outside. Flavian Pratt will be jumping on another Brad Cox training, and, and this is a Godolphin homebred named Encino. Interestingly, Encino has never raced on a dirt surface before, but he's progressed in each of his three races up at Turfway Park. Yeah, and, and I don't know, part of that running at Turfway Park may have been that Brad Cox, and, and, and I you know, I certainly agree with it, uh, wants to try and keep his good horses separated as much as possible. So that put Encino uh, at Turfway Park. Uh, he broke his maiden there in his second try and had a very nice win in the Bataglia Stakes, which is one of the, the derby prep races, not a points race, but a race on the path to uh, um, the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, I think Encino ran a good race in that Pataglia. Cox has had good horses at Turfway Park in recent years uh, uh, in these lead up to the Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks. So no negative there. I think Encino might be a long, long shot, live long shot in here. Uh, Chad Brown has two others besides Sierra Leone, Matt. And uh, Good Money and Top Connor both have things to like. Top Connor first on the rails, a twirling candy son, sold for a million dollars as a two-year-old. He's only had one race, won it by two lengths at Gulfstream Park. Good Money, the son of Good Magic, has had two races. So he's much more experienced than Top Connor, Matt. He's had, he's had two races. He won a maiden at Tampa Bay Downs. Then he came back and was beaten less than a length, although he was fourth in that Tampa Bay Derby. Yeah, again, two looks like two very nice three-year-olds for Chad Brown. I know Top Connor was being considered for the Wood Memorial, but is going in uh, 
uh, in the bluegrass, a very nice debut that he won by two lengths, going a mile, and uh, then good money. Uh, uh, like you said, uh, was a nice debut winner also, and, and a, a good, a close fourth in the Tampa Bay Derby. Both time, both of these horses, unusually for Chad Brown, are going to probably come with double digit odds. Yeah, well, he's got the favorite. So uh, second and third horses, both both very lightly raced. And it, it seems like a tough spot for horses with such uh, little experience under their belts. But uh, maybe good money, especially Top Connor could be any kind. But maybe good money, especially, could move forward off a, of a tough effort in the Tampa Bay Derby. Another horse who's actually under 10 to 1 on the morning line, Matt, is uh, Todd Pletcher trained BU. And BU has run... Uh, uh, against uh, uh, several good horses in his career, but he just could not break his maiden. Finally, he did last time impressively. It was seven furlongs for the Rapoli stable uh, at Gulfstream Park last time. I don't know if that's turning the uh, uh, turning a corner for BU, but uh, after all those losses, uh, it, it's hard for me to jump on him too much. Seize the Gray also deserves a mention, Matt. Arrogate, D. Wayne Lucas coming off a, a night just steal in the Arkansas Derby. Where he got second, maybe sees the gray can move forward as well. He's he ran third last time in the Jeff Ruby stakes. Yeah, a couple of uh, uh, of contenders from Hall of Fame trainers uh, that have you know that have shown a glimpse of some talent in there. You know, with BU and Pletcher, certainly an unusual uh, set of PPs for. Uh, Pletcher horse and that he needed six tries to break his maiden. But in earlier races, he he was third in the American Pharaoh out in California and fourth in the hopeful. So he ran in two grade one races before breaking his maiden. Yeah, and, and he gets Irad Ortiz Jr. Uh, hopping aboard. But uh, again, a tough spot after uh, all those tries he's made. All right, that's the bluegrass, Matt. We're going to we're going to jump around here as as. As I mentioned, we have three major preps to talk about, so we can't spend too much time on the bluegrass. we got to get to the Wood Memorial. You mentioned the weather, uh, similar weather here in Kentucky where a lot of rain during the week, but it looks like it'll clear up. We should have a fast track for both the bluegrass and the Wood Memorial. The Wood Memorial map has attracted a big field this year. Uh, here it is, a field of 13, and uh, it, it certainly looks like the favorite will break from the number four hole. His name is Deterministic. We talked about him a little bit already. Matt, he's only had two races. They've looked very good, Saratoga and Aqueduct. They certainly have, Brian. Uh, two for two. He broke his maiden back at Saratoga. Uh, uh, so it was a while, and then he had some time off uh, until this year. The Clement Barn wanted to find an allowance race for this horse, but they had trouble finding a race to fill with the right timing. So they said, oh, we'll ship him up to New York for the Gotham. And, and well, okay. Uh, that's the way it worked out. And, and he flashed, uh, he flashed his stuff in that Gotham, as we have talked about. He, to me, Brian, the son of Lee's, Liam's map, looked like a horse that is going to love the added distance. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to disagree, although Liam's map was questionable at a mile and a quarter, but there's a lot of breeding there, and the way he's running makes you think that uh, he'll move forward. But the questions with the favorite are he's coming off a, a, a slop track win in his uh, only takes win. He's only had two turns. He's never been two turns. So there are fair questions with deterministic, but uh, he does look like a potential star in the making for a, a great trainer in Christophe Clement. I think another horse who will get a whole lot of action here, Matt, is the Pletcher runner, uh, a son of Vino Rosso, and that's Tuscan Sky. Much like deterministic, Matt, he's two for two. Both of his wins have come on off tracks. Both of his wins were impressive, though. One at uh, sprinting at Aqueduct and the other one going two turns at the fairgrounds. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. Uh, he broke his maiden at Aqueduct. Uh, by more than five lengths, went back down south to run in an allowance race at the fairgrounds. I think it must have been because of the weather, Brian, but he only beat a field that was only part of a field of three on that day. Yeah, although the horse that finished 
second came back and won that start. That's Nash, a good horse in that uh, small field at uh, fairgrounds. Tuscan Sky will have to prove it on a dry trip uh, against a uh, deep field here, but another horse who really could be any kind. Tuscan Sky, like also. So a horse who might want to go farther for uh, trainer Todd Pletch on the rail mat. His name is Resilience. Bill Mott brings us this one. Bill Mott has a couple of interesting horses, in fact, in the field. Uh, Resilience is uh, going to be ridden again by Johnny V. And I think Johnny V likes this horse a little bit. Son of Into Mischief. He's only won one of five starts, but you can see him getting better. Uh, he ran a, a pretty good second to Stronghold last year as a two-year-old. Uh, two starts back, an impressive maiden winner at Gulfstream Park. And last time he was only fourth of 12 in the Risen Star, uh, but he was a game fourth in there, not beaten by a whole lot. And that Risen Star, of course, uh, included horses like Sierra Leone, Track Phantom, and Catching Freedom. So actually, Resilience might have an easier spot here in the in the Wood Memorial. Yeah, for sure, Brian. Uh, and I think that contributes to the reason that uh, uh, resilience needed four tries to break his maiden. And when he did it, he did it by more than four lengths. But but Hall of Fame trainer Bill Mott is not the kind that will rush his young horses uh, to get them ready to win first time. Uh, first time they do sometimes when they are more precocious type types, but with a talented horse like Resilience, not surprising that you know uh, uh, he's developing late at a distance here um, uh, for uh, most of the field in the Wood Memorial, but not for uh, Resilience, who was running in those longer races at fairgrounds. Yeah, the, the Risen Star, I thought, was a very good performance for a horse who's getting better. Interesting horse. Again, Johnny V uh, wanting to get back on resilience here for the Wood Memorial. We should talk about uh, a couple of horses that are uh, have raced each other, Matt. Uncle Heavy. I, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that Uncle Heavy uh, drew the 13 hole here in the Wood Memorial, but maybe that won't be a bad thing for a horse who can rally. Uncle Heavy's won a couple stakes already for trainer Butch Reed. And of course, last time he did it in the nine furlong, the nine furlong withers over the track. Yep, this is a Pennsylvania bred, Brian, uh, and, and trainer Butch Reed is always based down at uh, down at one of our favorite tracks, Parks Racing, Brian, and uh, a son of social inclusion. I don't know, that doesn't necessarily say uh, uh, long distances, but he already proved that he can go the mile in an eighth, which he did in the Withers. Uh, it was a really nice victory rallying from off the pace. He had previously uh, won on debut and won a Pennsylvania bred stakes race. Uh, um, talented horse. Yeah, I agree. The far outside post in this big field, I guess, is is not a big positive. But like you said, this is not a horse that is going to uh, uh, get to the lead. You could see him very easily. Uh, uh, moving and tucking in to save ground and make a rally uh, uh, when they go around the final turn. Yeah, Uncle Heavy's an interesting horse. He looks like a horse who wants to win, quite frankly. Uh, but uh, now he'll get a real class test in, in this Wood Memorial. Matt, we're uh, putting the Timeform U.S. Pace Projector up there. Again, that fast pace button. Uh, it has the number two, El Grandio. Uh, on the lead, but uh, several horses uh, not far behind here in this nine furlong wood memorial. Uh, you gave me a Pennsylvania bread. I'm going to give you two New York breads because El Grandio, a horse I want to talk about, also is uh, Elysian Meadows. They're both New York breads. And uh, New York breads uh, seem to be doing better and better of late in big races. El Grandio uh, has danced every dance. He's already had 11 races in this age of not running horses too often. Uh, he's been knocking on the door. It looked like he had a shot in, in both of his last uh, few races where he was third in the Gotham that we already talked about a lot with deterministic and just a touch. He also just missed behind Uncle Heavy in that wither. So El Grandio has always been there in the stretch match. Linda Rice, uh, a horse you have to watch on the lead. 
Yeah, you said it, Brian. Always been there. 11 career starts already, Brian, and 10 of them resulted in top three finishes. So, yeah, this horse has got strategic speed. He'll be obviously well-placed in the race, and he has shown grit and determination down the stretch. Yeah, that, 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 it, it, it's a nice horse to have and, and and to keep running in all these good races. I, I can't pick him in here, Matt, but just a nice New York bread. Uh, looking at the pace projector, we see a lot of the favorites that we've already talked about. Number four, Deterministic. Number nine, Tuscan Sky. Uh, Tuscan Sky and number one, Resilience, all kind of in mid-pack in this race with uh, a fair amount of speed all looking to uh jockey for position probably early and make their move on the turn uh another one i wanted to mention is the other new york bred here matt number nine i'm sorry number eight elysian meadows he's the other bill mott i said there were two interesting bill mots first two races were sprints for the new york bred uh, sprinting against state breads and he he looked like a good horse doing it the son of city of light he went out to what uh, he went down to tampa bay downs was on the far outside, the 12 post, a wide fourth in that. And he's finishing pretty well. I think that's a race he could move forward off of and, and maybe a long shot in with a shot on here Saturday. Yeah, certainly agree with you, Brian. And another one trained by uh, Bill Knott. And, and this is a son of City of Light. So, again, a, an interesting horse listed at 15 to 1 in the morning line. Yeah, 15 to 1 on the morning line. I, I have the wrong race up. I'm jumping ahead of myself here. There's the Wood Memorial. Yeah, uh, that that actually is is our morning line. We haven't seen the Aqueduct morning line yet. So this is where we project them with Deterministic as the favorite, followed closely by Tuscan Sky. Everybody else, including even Resilience, should have some decent odds on Saturday in the Wood Memorial. Okay, I, I, I teased it, I guess. That was a tease because we're going out to California next, Matt. Santa Anita Derby, a little bit smaller field as we've grown accustomed to out at Santa Anita. Uh, come on, there we go. Santa Anita horse field and uh, uh, the uh, the favorite, as usual, should be a Bob Baffert runner. As Not as usual, though, it's Frankie DeTore up on this one, Matt. That's the number four imagination. Imagination, uh, of course, is a son of Into Mischief, and he really has a solid record uh, much like door knock and uh, another horse we're going to talk about in a second uh, stronghold he seems to show up every time getting a little bit better of late uh, gave the highly rated uh, maimon all he wanted in, in an allowance race two starts back but then he came right back in an easier race and was a game winner of the San Felipe. Yep, won the San Felipe, grade two by head. Uh, uh, and as you mentioned, was also uh, in a very close finish uh, in that allowance race at Santa Anita. Imagination, Bob Baffert, going to be the favorite. Going to be the favorite, yep, uh, for sure. Baffert coming off a Arkansas Derby win with Muth. Uh, imagination, I think, is a deserving favorite. You said Santa Anita. If you look at his three Santa Anita races, after running second in two races at Del Mar, uh, the only horse to beat him in three races at Santa Anita is Maimon. And again, Maimon is extremely uh, highly regarded, another Baffert there. So imagination looks like the horse to beat in the Santa Anita Derby, but there are plenty of options. And of course, that list would be led uh, by the number three stronghold, another horse. In fact, he has an identical record, not to imagination. Never been worse than second in five starts for trainer Phil D'Amato. This is a son of Ghost Zapper who seems to uh, uh, like imagination, be getting a little bit better with the, uh, every start. He ran well out in Kentucky early in his two roads uh, career with a, a couple of good maiden races out here. And then he took a show to California and he's not disappointed out there. I, I guess nice host beat him pretty bad in the Bob Hope, but uh, he was right there in the low South Futurity late last year. And then last time I, he won a stakes race, a greatest stakes race in New Mexico. Yeah. Uh, looks like a horse that uh, if you're looking for uh Bob Baffert uh, uh, alternatives may be one of the ones that uh, uh, will uh, be threatening. Other other 
horses that are not trained by Bob Baffert certainly have a chance in here. And Stronghold has a big chance for Phil D'Amato. Then you got uh, Tapolo, a son of Tapature for John Sadler. We know John Sadler's had some big horses over the year. Can Tapolo be another one? It, it took a little while to get going. In fact, it took him four races to break his maiden, but then he was a nice winner of a seven furlong race, uh, maiden race at Santa Anita. And then he went up to uh, Golden Gate, and that's an all-weather surface up there for the El Camino Real Derby, Matt. And uh, although Endlessly kind of put him away late, uh, Endlessly uh, had more trouble in the El Camino Real Derby with Tapolo than he did with anything in the Jeff Ruby Stakes. So his second in the El Camino Real Derby was, uh, was flat by what Endlessly did afterwards. Oh, no doubt about that. And and uh, since our last show now, the connections of Endlessly are are seriously considering running in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, Endlessly is a good-looking horse, and uh, it would be interesting to see him in the Kentucky Derby, it looks like now. Tapolo, a horse who has a shot in here. Matt, Matt let's throw up that uh, time form U.S. pace project, and we can take a look at what the, uh, the, the the three favorites probably, uh, where they are projected to be on the early pace. And you see uh, that fast pace button once again, but no real clear delineation there with three horses right there on the lead, including Imagination. Uh, and then uh, a bunch of horses not far back, including uh, Tapolo and Stronghold, the two and the three there. So uh, it could be a, a real interesting race into the first turn in this nine furlong grade one Santa Anita Derby. And it could be a race with uh, with some pace. Maybe that helps the horse coming from a little farther back. McVeigh, despite being a maiden, Matt, he's uh, only five to one on the Santa Anita Derby morning line, which is a little surprising considering he's 0 for 4. But uh, uh, Sheriff's, John, trainer John Sheriff's is kind of well known for developing these horses. And uh, McVeigh has had some experience against good horses running second to Mayman, uh, fourth in the Bob Lewis, third last time in the San Felipe. Nothing about those performances screams Santa Anita Derby winner to me. But if he can move forward a little bit, and come running, maybe uh, maybe Sheriff's is developing something good here. Well, I think he is developing something good. I, the question is, as you brought up, Brian, is it in time to uh, uh, get a win in the Santa Anita Derby? I don't know. We'll see. But uh, he doesn't necessarily need to win this race. That's true. That's true. If he runs a good race and he's finishing well, he could go into the Kentucky Derby as a maiden and an interesting maiden, the son of Constitution. Another horse we need to talk about is Winstock because just a couple starts back, Winstock late last year won the Low South Futurity in a game performance in which he beat Imagination. Uh, I am sorry, in which he beat Stronghold in that uh, Low South Futurity late last year. His one race this year for trainer Bob Baffert, though, uh, was an off track in the Southwest, uh, and he was nowhere that day. Yeah, he certainly uh, certainly was. He was 11th in that race. So uh, if you are going to uh, use Winstock in here, you're going to have to do the, well, I'm going to draw a line through that race, say it was the wet track, and move on. Yeah, yeah, and, and you can do that easily because his races out in Southern California are pretty good and uh, uh, kind of fit with most, at least most of the horses in the field. And as we said, he beat Stronghold a few races back in the Los Al Futurity. Another horse I want to throw out there real quick, Matt, is uh, the Doug O'Neill trainee. EJ won the cup. Uh, Mike Smith will be on the Doug O'Neill runner. And this horse took seven races. He finally did it at Santa Anita. And then he comes right off that maiden win, uh, maiden win at Santa Anita, goes down to Arizona and wins the Turf Paradise Derby, Matt. Is, is there anything there to, to think that EJ won the Cup, can be a real contender on Saturday? Um, I guess you could describe those two uh, races uh, very optimistically. I think as you did, my friend Brian Zipsy, uh, 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 the maiden win was in a maiden claiming race. Uh, and the uh, Turf Paradise uh, Derby, um, you know, has a purse of about sixty thousand dollars. 
Yeah, and I'm going to throw this out there too, Matt. Uh, off that uh, uh, seven races to break the maiden, and then finally a sharp win at Santa Anita. EJ won the cup was one to ten in the Turf Paradise Derby. So that makes uh -huh. me think. I didn't handicap that race, but it makes me think that he was not beating much in Arizona. All right, Matt, uh, three big preps, uh, grade one, bluegrass, grade one, Santa Anita Derby, grade two, uh, Wood Memorial, all across the country, certainly Kentucky Derby ramifications here. Let's get to our top picks. We've had uh, a bunch of winners of late. Let's keep it rolling with our top picks. You can start. We'll start in the way we we roll through them. So the bluegrass will be first. Okay, Brian. Uh, um, as I mentioned uh, at the uh, beginning of the show, my top two horses on my Kentucky Derby list are running on Saturday. Sierra Leone is one of them. So he has to be my top pick. Well, he happens to be my number one right now. Neither Neither of us have jumped uh, fierceness up to number one off that big performance. We'll see. We'll see if that uh, comes back to uh, uh, bite us in the butt, uh, as they say. Yeah, I like Sierra Leone, too. Uh, I, I just feel like Sierra Leone is the real deal, the sonic gun runner. He, he really can run down the stretch. Wouldn't surprise me. This is a tough field. It wouldn't surprise me if he got beat in the bluegrass, but I can't pick anybody else but him. I think he is uh, a real good Horse and a real good prospect as we move to the Triple Crown. And I think there's enough speed to set up his late run. I like him in the bluegrass. How about the Wood Memorial, Matt? Wood Memorial, Brian, has got my other horse, my second-ranked horse in Deterministic. Boy, I, I love the way Deterministic won uh, the Gotham. And he's the kind of horse that I, uh, that I really appreciate a horse that is very athletic, a horse that is very light on his feet. Um, with all those things being considered, deterministic is my top pick in the wood. You know, Matt, those very words are often what I've thought about you when you're when you're getting to the, the head of the line at, at the hot dog stand at Saratoga. You, you, very athletic, light on your feet. Yeah, deterministic is the horse to beat here. Uh, deterministic is a uh, a really really good prospect. Like I said, though, he's the favorite. Only had two races, never been two turns. I'm going to take a shot, and, and the horse I want to take a shot with here in the Wood Memorial is Resilience. I think Bill Mott has a couple interesting ones, and I'm intrigued by Resilience. I'm intrigued by Johnny V. The things he said about this uh horse uh, coming into the bluegrass resilience a son of into mischief getting better a nice win at gulfstream park and i thought the performance in the risen star was very good at nine furlongs so i'm going to go with resilience as my upset in the wood memorial you can't pick all favorites the santa anita derby though on the other hand i am picking the favorite because i think imagination the baffert runner is the horse to beat really like his last two races He's the top pick for me. How about you? I am going to try and beat the Baffert horses. I am going to pick Stronghold as my top pick. I like this horse early on. I like this horse uh, uh, last year uh, with the win at Churchill Downs. Uh, um, ran behind Nysos uh, in one of his defeats, so there's no uh, disgrace with that. A uh, couple of nice second places in the Los Al Futurity and in the San Felipe. For trainer Phil D'Amato, uh, um, I think the the move out to uh, mile and an eighth will be good for this guy. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering about Stronghold and and the distance a little bit. I see Ghost Zapper on one side, which I like going longer. Awesome again is his grandsire there. Uh, on the other side is Jimmy Creed though, and Jimmy Creed is a is a sire I like at one turn. So I'm uh, not sold, but I really did like what he did down in new mexico in that sunland derby winner stronghold certainly uh not a bad pick at all there in the santa anita derby all right matt one of my favorite days of the year big preps all over big cards all over uh can i get a parting shot from you my good friend there in the east coast absolutely i will be at aqueduct to uh celebrate the basically the end of the big races on the kentucky derby trail so if you're out there, say hello uh, um, and enjoy the, these, these big races all over the country. Big cards on all of these at all these tracks on the undercards also. 
Yeah, yeah. Big, big races all the way around these uh, three big derby preps. And there's actually a pick three that you can do, a national pick three. It's a $3 bet with a 19% takeout where you can combine the Santa Anita Derby with the Wood Memorial and the Bluegrass. So the three races we talked about. We, uh, as always, we want to thank all of you for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, turn on those notifications so you get to know when Horse Hunter's ready each and every week. Leave us a comment. We always like to read the comments. And uh, Matt, uh, we should also, of course, thank uh, Derby Wars, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. Time for US uh, for the great pace projections they provide. And most of all, Candace Curtis, our friend in the home office for the race graphics. Folks, good luck with these last few Kentucky Derby, Derby preps. We still have the Lexington next week. But until then, uh, I hope you all win big. Thanks for watching. We'll see you right here next week on another edition of Horse Center.